So it's news flash, April eighth, twenty twenty two. I had to make more space on my Kindle, and so what I was saying was I used to buy the hemp protein powder that I had received in the mail more frequently when at the grocery store years ago when I first was like um, starting out as a vegan, and I I it did help. Um, in regarding the, you know, muscular development early on, okay? But it wasn't until I introduced the vitamin B6 booster drinks that I drank for the past seven years when I, wait, it was actually when I started eating the mandarin oranges and non-dairy yogurts, uh, when I noticed the weight gain with the head protein powder I was drinking at the time. It's, I was reflecting back onto that when I was doing more reading and I, so I, it's the B6 booster that helps the metabolism sometimes as well. Okie dokie. And um, the reason why I, I cut back on purchasing the hemp protein powder years ago was because of the price where it was for a while sold for $15. Interestingly, it's 15 grams of protein uh, per serving. I'm not sure how many servings come in the container here. So they changed the the artwork on the bottle. It's nice. Yeah, 15 grams of protein per serving. Four tablespoons is a serving. 15 servings per container. It's always it's been that way for a long time. Yeah, it used to be sold, um, was that, it was like, so this has 15, it was like a dollar a serving at one point, depends on where you, um, purchase it, but our local grocery store sells it for, I believe, around the same price as, um, either maybe a dollar a serving there, you know, not, not, they don't have a juice bar or anything like that, but you know, um, based on the unit of, um, you know, if you do the math, or it could be around the same price as what I purchased it for online, which was around thirteen dollars. So, anyways, I only use about a serving size in the pasta that I make the. I use it as a spinach substitute for its chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. Some people, when they hear the word chlorophyll, they think of something else that I wouldn't want to even like mention on, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, the whole point that I was trying to make here, which um, the tapioca flour and the right, sweet white rice flour were together in one box. I just thought it was funny how freeze-dry, non-decaffeinated, organic fair trade coffee. And this is the non-decaffeinated variety, okay? I found out they do sell a, a one that's labeled um, explicitly decaffeinated with a green um, artwork on the packaging. So, it, whereas this is red, white, and black uh, artwork on the Mount Hagen variety freeze dried non decaffeinated fair trade coffee that I, I, I like. So it's not decaffeinated. But it probably uses the CO2 um, liquid carbon dioxide to make it freeze dried, I believe. I think they. But they had mentioned that they use it in the decaffeination process. I'm not sure if it's... I'm not sure exactly. So... Got this. There you go. Ah. Oh, whoops. So it's together. This one doesn't say decaffeinated, 
it's um when I did the Google search on um I thought that they I thought that they were implying that this was decaffeinated but no 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 it's not it's not the, they do no wait no mom you're interrupting me the decaffeinated one is actually explicitly labeled decaffeinated on their website in with the green type of artwork on their packaging this no 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 i wanted this one I just thought, no, see, when you do a Google search, um, yeah, when you do the Google search, when, on the, how they do the freeze drying process, they were mentioning something that, that as if all their coffee was decaffeinated. It was like, kind of like confusing like that or something. Anyways. If they probably didn't write do that right up, it was probably someone else. I don't know. It was just the the, the way I interpreted it. Anyways, whatever. I just thought it was funny how it's together in there. Okay. Let's see. I got the swing of the powder. To as usual. This one's nice. And the two of the tapiocas, this was actually a great deal for two. Saved money by buying the two pack. It was like, uh, I'm not sure, I, I forget what it was, the price. But it was like, okay, I saved about $3 or so, I believe. Then if I were to buy two, just one, it was like, I think it came to $17 for a two pack, I believe. I had the burp. <laughs> so, I dropped this on the, I have to wipe it down with the Clorox wipe. Like I make sure it's airtight sealed. Yeah, it's pretty airtight. It's not leaking or anything, thank goodness. Put that in this box for now. Um, so, yeah, I think it was two for 17, whereas if I had bought the one, it was $13. So I saved about $3 instead of buying just, just, I, you know, instead of getting the refill, like, three, four months from today. It's $3 saved instead of buying, um, I, maybe it was more than that, than that that I had saved. I don't know. Anyways, I don't feel like going through, I'm not the greatest at doing mental math on camera. You know what I mean? I um, do mental math quite strangely, actually. And uh, when I was a kid, I did it quite kind of backwards. But you know, I, I found it easier to do th do things a little bit backwards. But with computers, I like doing like the the fastest method. You know, um, stuff like that. I like doing number crunching and stuff like that type of stuff. Anyways, yeah. Uh, most computer programmers, they aim for that. That's what they, you know, they try to, you know, when it comes to even at legacy hardware and running um, to see if the, the new um, software technologies if they can access the low level technology using the new higher level programming languages, that's important for some people so that they can have access to like, you know, 
closer to the hardware of the device and optimize their code that way. Well, you know, that you can do that even through JavaScript in some ways. You know, like, uh, if on the server side, the way the data is interpreted on the server, if they're using or running, like, uh, something like, practical extraction report language Perl CGI you can run C uh, modules written in C programming languages and C programming language can uh, allow one to sometimes embed um, at the top of their code uh, inline assembler or inline assembly sometimes it depends you know, or um, the, right under the preprocessor directives. And even that can be optimized. You know, that's used for um, compilation time optimization and stuff like that. But programmers, they always like, the, they want to optimize their stuff so that it runs at its optimal speed. I don't really like talking. It's like someone that goes to work, you know, and then when they get home from work, they don't like talking about their work, you know, that's, but I don't mind. I do like, um, you know, quick fixes, you know what I'm saying? And just like sit back. Everything's fine. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? That type of stuff. <laughs>